Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know though is that hopefully you're watching me in black and white because this is the second instalment of my One Row in a Palette series. Once again, it's with the beautiful Jessica. And the palette we are using this time is the Revolution Forever Flawless Constellation palette. So, if you want to find out which row I chose, which row Jessica chose, and how this looks in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, mm. you have the best seat in the house. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. It keeps coming over overcast and then brightening up. It's only midday. There is no way in hell I'm putting the lights on yet. Except for obviously my little strip lights that I've got behind the camera. Um, in other words, if the lighting goes up and down in this, I'm really sorry. As you will have known from the intro, that I haven't recorded yet. This is, um, I think it's only episode two of One Row in a Palette. It is again with the beautiful Jessica. And uh, I chose this one. This is the Revolution Forever, Flaw Forever Flawless Constellation Palette. Because to be quite honest, I've barely touched this. It's one of their tinned ones. This is what the colour scheme is. So you can see it's it's my kind of colours, but I just I kind of pick it up, look at it, and then put it back down and choose something else. So I literally think I've only used this once. So I wanted to get more use out of it. Because in January I'm planning on doing a this is my current makeup combined with a declutter at the same time. So I really need to try this and decide whether I want it in my collection or not. So, one row in a palette, basically the only rule is you have to use all the colours in the row that you choose. And I chose the middle row, so my colours look like this which are starting from here the yellow and going across solar cluster venus neptune universal and harp to be honest as usual i haven't got a scooby what look i'm actually going to do with this not even sure <laughs> we we first planned this months and months ago and to be honest, I'm not even sure I would have chosen that row if I was choosing today. I'm in a bit of a weird mood, folks. You'll have to forgive me. Now, regardless of all of that blethering, this is still a teaching channel. And because of that, combined with my chronic pain, means that I cannot blend as quickly as a lot of people do. And because I want absolute beginners to be able to follow along as if it's their first time they've ever picked up a brush I do blend slower than most people so if that is likely to irritate you there is a speed widget up there somewhere please feel free to use it um, faces washed moisturized SPF and primed today I actually used one of my Gerard Slay All Day setting sprays first because my skin was feeling a bit tight today even though I've got combo. This is the rose scent 
that they did in collaboration with Nikia Joy, the Australian makeup artist. I love it, it smells like Turkish Delight, amazing. Um, the reason I got that one out is because I'm nearly at the end of my coconut one and I'm probably going to use that one today. So I, st I started off with the rose and then went over it with my usual um, antiperspirant primer, facial antiperspirant. Um, there are more details in that in the film in the description box along with all of my um, discount codes and stuff. But basically side effect of chronic pain is facial sweating. One of the symptoms that I have with fibro is excessive facial sweating. And one of the side effects of the meds that I take for chronic pain is, yes, you've guessed it, facial sweating. So if I don't use that antiperspirant primer, makeup won't stay on my face. End of. Um, sometimes even that struggles on 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 super bad days I do very very minimal makeup if you want to see what I do on super bad days then let me know and I will get that filmed but um, all I've got on my eyes is my chrome pebble eyeshadow primer so let's get you zoomed in I'm going to talk you through the difference between deep set eyes and hooded lids I'm going to give you a workaround for both types of eye because one is often mistaken for the other and then I'm going to start chucking colour onto my face basically. Um, if you're a regular you can speed through until you see me wave a pink brush at you with some colour on it. Right, let's get you zoomed in. Well my phone is going crackers, it's been quiet all morning. Minute I sit down to film, buzz, 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 buzz. Um, this eye primer is my Chrome Pebble one, which I've got in blank page cotton. This is my second pot of this. I love that primer. I do have a discount code for it. <clears throat> um, the reason I love it is it goes on dry. It's not sticky, but it still holds colour. So you don't have that choice between shall I set it so I can blend straight away or shall I not set it and get the full colour impact. So it's one of the reasons I love it. And also with my deep set eyes it very very rarely creases on me which is bloody awesome. Now I have just mentioned I have got deep set eyes. <clears throat> These are often mistaken for hooded lids because we get the same issues. We get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If we're cutting our crease we have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And shh, even when we're using glitter glue we'll get a bare patch through here if we're using glitters or <clears throat> particularly loose shimmers. Now. When I relax my brows and look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see much of it, less so than usual, because I'm a little bit puffy today with my fibro. It's made my face a little bit... <clears throat> but you can see all of my mobile lid. So I don't have hooded lids, it's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line part or all of that mobile lid that you have a hooded eye. Now, <clears throat> if you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your upper lid a new crease line. Obviously this is going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so use slightly smaller blending brushes and if necessary take the colour right up to the brow. If you have deep set eyes like myself, let me show you what that means. If I cover my mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much space again fold back away. In fact, if anything, I've got more space that tucks back away than is visible. And if I cover the upper lid and do the same thing, 
you can see the same again now I've got lid that tucks back away and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get which is why so often I hear people say oh I've got hooded lids and I'm looking at them thinking no love you've got deep set eyes so they're trying all the tricks that you use for hooded lids and wondering why they're not getting the best result and it's because it's a completely different workaround with the hooded lid you create a crease further up your eye with deep set eyes what we have to do when we're putting colour through our crease is just relax our brows look at it and make sure we've brought it up high enough that we can see it when our eyes are open so that is two very different workarounds for um, two very similar but definitely different eye shapes right I'm going to start off with a Morphe Jeffrey JS8 brush. This is a synthetic blender. It's clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to start off with... I think I'll go into Universal, which is the brown initially. Jimmy, this is very dusty, this palette. I've tapped back off into the pan, as you can see because when I want some more pigment I'll just go back in and dip in and pick that up. Now, um, I'm holding the brush right at the end so I put as little pressure on my lids as possible. And I'm going to start off about midway down my lid and do little circling movements. Going in that direction towards the nose, bit of a bounce, and then reverse the direction to come back out. If you like watching Strictly Come Dancing or Dancing with the Stars, this is the Viennese waltz of the blending because you have natural turns, a fleckle or a change step and then reverse turns coming back out again. And the reason that I do that is because I'm 45 years old and I've lost 14 stone which is about just under 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know 20 year olds who've always been stick thin that have loose eyelids um, and by doing this gentle circular movement you're gently flexing the skin in both directions to make sure you don't end up with any white gaps or tiger striping. Now I do struggle this side, I've got very very deep creasing just here um, and I do usually end up having to pull that eye out and stretch the lid. Um, it's where that eye was pulled around when I was a kid when they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly with it. That's actually blended out really quite nicely. So I'm going to pick up the excess loose pigment. And the excess back off, there's still excess coming back off that brush. And I'm going to do this side while I tell you a little bit about the beautiful Jessica, as if you don't already know who she is. Um, I discovered her, I, I actually watch quite a lot of uh, Swedish YouTubers, but I discovered Jessica um, quite a while ago now. I'd recorded my uh, eyeshadow palette collection as it was back then. Um, and you can find that in the playlist of my makeup collection. And what you may not know if you're not a creator on YouTube is when you put a film up you put metadata on the film so that when people are searching it they know to, to suggest your film. So obviously I had makeup collection, eyeshadow palettes, eyeshadow collection etc etc. I really hope next door's music isn't being picked up. Um, I will try and reduce the background noise as much as possible with my editing software. But this is why I haven't been able to film yet until midday, despite having been up since half past six. Because the music has been on so loud it was being picked up on my camera. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth. And I'm going to go in with initially some of Venus, the pink, 
and then I'm going to go in with Neptune the blue. Right, so I, I put these tags on, <clears throat> and then what YouTube will do, once you've uploaded it and made it live, they'll think, ah, you have an interest in this. Let's show you more people that have put similar films up. Which is great. Um, and that's how I found Jessica, because her... I'm using the same brush, by the way. Her film popped up with, I have 1,400 eyeshadow palettes, and I'm like... Yeah, that's, that's, that's got to be a mistype, surely. You can see I'm just really gently smudging the front edge of this with the pink. Blending it in with that brown. Kind of almost completely covering the brown, to be honest. Which doesn't worry me, because it's making quite a pretty colour. I should do the same this side. Oh, next door's music is really starting to annoy me. I wouldn't mind, but they play the same song over and over and over and over and over again. And then the volume will suddenly crank up really loud. But I've got to get this filmed because this needs to go live tomorrow. And I still have to edit it. So yeah, YouTube put this up. Put Jessica's film up in my suggested films. Um... I have 1400 palettes and I'm like, surely that's, surely that's a mistype, surely that's like, you know, I have, I have 140 palettes. No, 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 at the time she had 1400 palettes. 1,400. Um, and all I saw in that, because of the way she, that she filmed it, was her hands in and out of, of her storage drawers and stuff. And heard her voice and I just absolutely fell in love with the woman. I, her personality came through even though you couldn't see her face. Um, there's me trying to brush away that and it's an age spot. Marvellous. Um, cleaning the brush off then I'm going to go back in with the blue. And uh, absolutely fell in love with Jessica, fell in love with her personality. Um, absolutely loved her voice and instantly subscribed without seeing any other films and I have not regretted it since um, I'm very lucky one of the problems when you when you are disabled and you do have chronic pain it can be very very difficult to maintain friendships because all too often, you know, something will be planned like a night out and then it gets to that day and you're in so much pain you're just like, I'm really sorry guys, I just can't do it today. Um, and I'm lucky, I have very understanding friends, but it, it can be very isolating because obviously, you know, most of my friends are out at work, which is what I would have been were I not disabled. Um, and it's, it's, it's really, really frustrating when, particularly when you've been looking forward to something for a very long time and then the day arrives and you're just, you're in so much pain, you just know that just getting ready to go out, just the physical, you know, putting on decent clothing, putting on stuff that, that has a shape that isn't hanging off you like a sack, so it's not touching your skin too much anywhere. Because um, that can be one of the issues with my fibro. I hate the feeling of, of anything touching my skin because it can just be so painful. Um, they just cranked it up. Cranked. <sighs> if I sound a bit odd in this one, it's because I've really had to tweak the audio. So yeah, one of the, you know, being disabled, having a chronic illness can be very, very limiting. It can be very, very isolating. And um, one of the best things that's happened for me since starting this YouTube channel is I have made what I consider lifelong friends through the platform, even though we've never actually met. <laughs> I have people that I consider very very important to me in my life and Jessica is absolutely one of those um, I adore the woman I think she's just 
fantastic and she has the cutest dog Gunvald too um, whereas I'm a, a teaching channel a tutorial channel she fully admits she doesn't do tutorials she doesn't teach like I do um, I'm just going to change brushes I'm going to go in with a still Morphe Jeffree Star still a um, synthetic but I'm going to go in with a JS17 which is a bit more tapered I'm just going to see if I can build some of that brown back up again because I did lose it quite a bit. Just going to deepen it up through here a little bit. Um, but yeah, she, she fully admits she's not a tutorial channel, so she doesn't zoom in as close. Um, but she still produces some of the most amazing eye looks. I mean, she is actually a trained makeup artist. She doesn't work in that field at the moment. She works in finance. Um, but she's a trained makeup artist and she bowls at a pretty much professional level. And it's just like, this woman is just amazing. I, I know that if we lived even in the same country, I know I would be arranging to go and see her on a very regular basis for a coffee and a catch up and you know playing with each other's makeup and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, she's she's just she's one of the nicest. I know I say this about a lot of the people that I collab with, but it, it's true. I I only really collab with people who are nice. Um, and she she is a real poppet, a real sweetheart. So I can thoroughly recommend if you don't already know who she is, shooting over and checking out her channel. You will not regret it, I promise you. But I'm just cleaning this brush off again. I use a clean washcloth now. I used to use a colour switch. Um, but I've found that, particularly with natural hair brushes, and I'm using synthetic ones today, but particularly with natural hair brushes, it's so harsh on the bristles um, that I much prefer. I either use a clean washcloth or um, a microfiber cloth, or to be honest, an old tea towel sometimes. Right, so I've used that one, that one, and that one. I still need to use this sort of glittery topper shade, this beautiful pewter and this gold. So I think I'm going to go into cluster which is the pewter. Although it's a shimmer I'm actually going to work it through my crease. Now you can use a shimmer through your crease. I've done all shimmer looks in the past. Um, just be prepared. It will take a little bit more buffing, a little bit more blending and you'll probably find you get a lot more fallout because what will happen when you buff a shimmer is you will end up almost sort of buffing the shimmer pigments away leaving the base tones showing up which sometimes can produce really fantastic looks that you weren't expecting because all of a sudden when the shimmer disappears you get to see sometimes really pretty duochromes that you think oh, I didn't know that was a duochrome I couldn't see it through the shimmer you know so I initially started off I've, I've gone up tight to the top because I want to have a little bit more control about how far I'm blending this up the eye because I don't want to completely cover the brown and I'm coming back down to the end again so I started off with my circular movements but I'm just gonna now I've done that I'm just gonna do a quick windscreen wiper through the crease and just make sure you can actually see it when my eyes are open so I've brought it up high enough you will eventually get to the stage where you won't need to, if you've got hooded lids, mark out where you need your crease to be because you'll know. 
likewise you know when you when you're blending colors through your crease you won't need to keep double checking because you'll know and I'm really just blending along the line I'm not trying to buff it up the eye at all just trying to soften the edge a little bit and just just try and buff a little bit of the shimmer particles away I swear next door I'll just turn the music up again. What I might have to do is end up putting some music of my own underneath my talking, which will kind of completely ruin the whole ASMR part of my channel. Um, but like I said I have to get this done and because I film the camera that I've got is an HD camera <clears throat> I film in HD I edit in HD I export in HD it takes me for a simple film like this where I'm not doing millions and millions of decals on like if I, I'm going to restart my Hell Yeah Why No series in January, it's just been too tempting during a low buy year. But I'm going to be restarting those in January. Um, and they take a good sort of three or four hours to edit because I have to put all the pictures in and sync it up with when I'm talking about it, etc, etc. Um, and they, they take a hell of a long time to, they can take up to eight hours to export because of all of the graphics on it. But a simple sort of 40, 45 minute film um, like this, just with the, the opening and closing graphics on it, probably takes about four or five hours to export and about an hour and a half to edit so I've got like six and a half hours of that and then it takes about half an hour to an hour to get it up onto YouTube depending on how busy YouTube servers are so I really can't leave this because Hubby's on an early tomorrow which means a 4.30 alarm so that, that's going to mean reasonably early bed <laughs> yeah uh huh fabulous Right, I'm actually going to bring a little bit of this down onto the outer third of my mobile lid, just to pull that colour down a little bit. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. I'm not enjoying next door's music, it's not my style of music. And I'm like, you couldn't have waited just, just long enough for me to get my filming done, could you? Normally I've got about seven or eight films backed up, ready to go, so if I'm unwell or I can't film because of pain, I've got I usually have at least, I put up about three films a week, usually minimum. And I normally have at least two weeks worth stacked up. I currently have one film because I can't film as often as I'd like to because of the neighbours having their music up so damn loud all the time. I wouldn't mind, but it's not her, it's her bloody brother. His twenties and still behaves like he's a bloody teenager. Right, I'm going to go in with this is another Morphe Jeffrey brush, but it wasn't part of the set. It was sold it separately. Uh, it's one of his lip brushes and it's LS24. And the reason I like it, if you can see the shape of that, it's really great for getting down into the inner corner when you've got quite restricted space there like I've got. Right, let's have a look at these two shapes. See, a harp really is the deeper of the two, so I'd normally put that out at the edge. But, it's more of a glittery top coaty shade than the gold.
let's give it a go. So I'm going to start off by going into solar, which is the, the gold. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will completely screw the pigment up. So, I packed pigment on both sides of the brush, and now I'm going to use this Wet n Wild Primer Water, just to wet it. Once you've done that, make sure you dry this ferrule off. The easiest way to do that is put it in the crook of your knuckle and spin the brush. Now, you can use any, any kind of moisture that you want. You can use a um, priming spray like I have. You can use a um, moisturising spray like MAC Fix Plus or Mario Badescu. You can use a setting spray, you can use a finishing spray, you can even use clean water out the tap. Just whatever you do, make sure your brush is dry when you go into the pigment. So you can see I'm just popping this onto the inner part of the lid. And I like to not do it as a cut crease. I like to see how much opacity the shimmers have and whether they can cover the deeper shade that I've put through the crease. And this one seems to be doing that okay. So I'm just going to dry the brush off, not so much cleaning the pigment off as just drying the brush before I go back in again to do the other eye now. I will have to stretch that eye out as I said. Um, if you are like me where you have already got really deep creasing, um, try doing it without stretching the lid out first. but Unfortunately, I know from experience with mine what happens is if I don't stretch the lid out, um, the pigment piles loosely into that creasing rather than being blended out. And then throughout the day, as it dries, because obviously it's going on wet at the moment, as it dries and my eye moves through the day, I end up with it kind of cascading down my face and it's you know if I wanted to create one-sided glittery random freckles it'd be great for that but that's not the look I'm going for so quite like this gold actually I'm really sorry if you can hear that. I am going to try my absolute best to sort that out when I'm editing. But because I've got quite a soft voice anyway, sometimes when I use the, um, the setting to minimise background noise, it makes me so quiet you can't hear me. Some people would say that's a blessing. Right, so I'm just going into harp. Packing that on. Again, I'm going to wet it and just apply it to kind of the middle part of the lid and blend it out towards the deeper shimmer that we put on the end there. And I'm literally just using the very tip of the bristles to buff where the two meet. And then I'm going to use the sides of the bristles to kind of lightly drag the gold across onto the deeper shade to kind of blend where they meet. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. I would have preferred it if that harp had a little bit more depth of colour because it's not instantly obvious that I've got a deeper shade going on there but there we go this harp is a very very loosely packed shade you need to be careful with this it's it's, it's producing a lot of like 
little clumpy bits on the top as you're rubbing your brush across it. Um, so careful you don't pile too much on your brush. And also it seems to be going hard pan quite quickly, but yeah, I can still pick up pigment on it. So it looks like it's got a lot of oil in this particular shimmer which is, is good in terms of it'll look nice and reflective for goodness sake man <sighs> sorry I, I shouldn't be whinging like this during my film but it's just it's so frustrating when I want to get stuff filmed and can't because there's damn music next door absolutely no consideration for neighbours at all Right, okay, um, I'm going to pause you, I'm going to pop some foundation and bits and pieces on uh, and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. But I'm quite happy because I have actually managed to use all the shades so far, so that's good. Um, there'll be no delay for you at all, I'll be back instantly. I, however, will have to wait until the next time that I press the record button in order to speak to you. So, wish me luck with the uh, noisy neighbours, huh? And I'll see you right now. Hello, I am back. Temporarily, next door's music has stopped. Let's keep our fingers crossed it stays that way. And for the first time in ages, I've done my coloured brows. Right. I'm going to go back in with this brush that you saw earlier and I'm going to dip into this um, pewter shade. Now, ugh, cannot stress this too much. If you're going to be going in like I am with a shimmer under your eye after you've done your makeup, be super careful because fallout is a bitch. I'm just going to use this to go all the way along the lower lash line because where my eyelids were puffy anyway today with my fibro I know I'm not going to be able to put a wing liner on because it will just start making my eyes stream Which is not good, folks. Not good at all. Put that one back. And then I'm going to go in with... This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it because it's flat topped, but it's chunky. So it's great for getting under your lashes. And... I think I'm going to go back in with Universal, the brown. and use that just to really gently buff that lower lash line just softening it up a little bit making it a bit more smoky can you see the difference between the two now? I hope so I always do this rather than putting anything in my waterline because again, very sensitive eyes, if I put stuff in my waterline it'll usually last about long enough for me to take half a dozen photos and it starts streaming down my face again and I'm just like, yay, great, thanks, lovely. Uh, now. I think I might grab my Fenty. I love that sort of duochrome thing. This is um, Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. This is a lip brush that I bought from eBay about a decade ago. 
So I'm going to go into lightning dust and I'm going to pop a little bit of that just under the tail of my row. Just to give it a bit of oompa pa and then I'm going to use the same colour on the tear duct and I like to pull it under the tear duct and just gently blend it into the colour that I've got going underneath my eye. You can just leave it like that if you want but I much prefer bringing mine down and I'm going to grab a little bit of the other one which is fire crystal and just pop that on top because as we all know with me when it comes to highlighters more is more so I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to lob some mascara on, chuck some more of these all over my face, uh, do something with my hair, and I will be back with my finished look. Fingers crossed it's still nice and quiet next door. I'm back. I'm expecting the door to go any minute because I've not had an interruption today, so it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So this is my final look for my one row in a palette. What do you think? You like? Yes, I went ham with the highlighter, of course I did. The mascara is the Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa one. That has It's a lovely mascara, um, but it has a very, very large brush on it. So if you have got smaller eyes you may find it difficult to get to all your lashes um, so either save a mascara wand from a favourite thing of mascara or disposable makeup one, uh, mascara ones works fine uh, the lipstick is actually one of these NYX suede bullet lipsticks in lavender and lace I'm really liking these. Um, I only discovered them recently. I've only really been getting into bullet lipsticks the last sort of four or five months. Um, it's so soft and so comfortable on the lips, but it really lasts a long time, which amazes me completely. Um, so yeah, there we go. There's my final look. Obviously, if you're one of my 4F babies, I'm going to need you to go over to the gorgeous Jessica and find out which row she has chosen and how her look comes out and obviously I'm going to need you to do all those good YouTubery things you know, give her a like, give her a comment, hit subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to her and please excuse my throat from growling if you are here from Jessica's channel hi, hello, welcome I hope you enjoyed it here. If you've made it this far, I'm guessing you must have liked a little something about it. I've got a lot of other films you can watch if you're still not sure. But if you do know that you like what you see, subscribe button's just down there. And it would be lovely to welcome you to the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. So, all that remains for me to say, my darlings, as ever, is your stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.